What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Rays Reflection Podcast. Follow me on Instagram at I'm Nathaniel Reyes and make sure you subscribe for free. And I'm on Apple, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. Now, every episode is special, but this one is unprecedented because I'm in uncharted waters with two guests. This is the first time ever that I've had two guests on. Uh, everyone remembers their first, their first home, their first love. I mean, heck, the USA tried to be the first to get on the moon. It's all about that first time. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome the talented, beautiful duo of Casey and Lindsay, known as the Marylands. Thank you for coming on, both of you. Oh, my God. What an amazing intro. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Thank you. So, so excited to be here. We're going we're gonna to try not to talk at the same time, but I can't promise you that won't happen. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, I'm completely okay with it. Like I said, this is new for me, so whatever happens, I, I, I'm cool with it. I'm, I love it. So, ladies, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, speaking of first, I think you two are the first on John Legend's team as a duo, too. I'm not, I, I checked a little bit. I did a little bit of research. I think you might be the first duo on his team as well. I could be wrong. I think he might be right. I don't know that he's ever had a group. Yeah, I think so. So look at that. See, look at that. We're all we're all experiencing things wow. for the first time. But um, before we continue, also your last name. How do you say that? Actually, can I try to say it? Yeah, let's let's hear your version. All right, all right, all right. All right. Is it? Is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know what? All right. Get three I, tries. I, to, to not embarrass three tries. Thank you. To not embarrass myself, I'm actually gonna pass. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it's Stan Staniszewski. How do you say that again? Stan. Stan. Uh. Uh. Chef. Chef. Ski. Ski. Staniszewski. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess technically it's like Staniszewski, but Staniszewski. No. Yeah, it's Polish. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, no, um, I've had my name butchered. I've had Reese, Rise, so I can't imagine how yours has been butchered. Oh, yeah. Growing <laughs> up, growing up, we had to get used to, you know, spelling it out for everybody, pronouncing it, because the Z-E-W is, you know, silent, the Z, yeah. so it's, you know, it's a tricky one, but we've had people over the years kind of just say the skits, the Stanskis, the Stan, <laughs> so we're, we're fine with whatever you want to interpret our last which, name as. <laughs> which is honestly why we couldn't really go with that as our band name. Like if we wanted to use our actual name, like our last name, it just, it just wouldn't work <laughs> because no. no one would know how to say it or spell it. So <laughs> no, I, 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 that totally makes sense. Um, have you two ever been called twins too? Like, have people ever mistaken you two for twins? Oh yeah. Yes. All the time. Oh we get that, like every time I feel like now, especially as we've gotten older, like, and, and I think like as a duo, we, you spend so much time together and, you know, we live in Nashville together. So it's like, we just start kind of getting the same like mannerisms. And, and over the years, I feel like we've, we've tried our hardest not to talk in sync actually, because we're so like in tune with each other. Yeah. So we understand why people kind of think that, I mean, we both have the dark hair and like I said, we try not to talk in sync, but we are three years apart. So. Okay. Yeah. There is a, there is an age. Uh, Lindsay, you're the older one, right? I'm the older one. And so I take it as a compliment that everyone thinks we're twins. Cause I'm like, okay, yeah. well, I guess my age just doesn't show. <laughs> honestly though, honestly though, it really doesn't. I honestly thought you two were twins until you said that you were, cause like you said, especially when you're around a person for a long time, it, it, you're gonna, it's going to be seen as that way. I, I get called twins with my brothers and there's like a five year age difference. So I completely get it. Like, and plus, I think I'm blessed with looking younger than what I actually am. I always, I always get hit with the uh, 21, 22, and I'm like, I'm going to be 30 in a year and a half. Like, come oh, on. Wow. Well, take it and run with it, man. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it, it's cool. But when you're not when you're getting carded or I like I got carded for buying a uh, a rated M video game a month. Okay. And a half ago, OK, <laughs> oh so. God. So when that happens, you know, sometimes yeah. I'm like, all right, come on now. No. So other than other than you two syncing up now with your mannerisms and how you, you know, communicate, what was it like growing up in the Stefanoskis uh, household? So, <laughs> you know, you know what it is. Stanishevsky, yeah. We we grew up in a very tight knit family. So it's just the two of us in terms of siblings. And um our parents have actually been married for 
I'm going to get in trouble if I get this wrong, but I believe they celebrated their 42nd anniversary. Congratulations. Their 40th. It's either the 40th or their 42nd anniversary this year. So, um, sorry. To that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we, we grew up around a, around a lot of music. I mean, my parents loved music. My dad actually yeah. kind of took a, a music musical route at one point, kind of college years, um, and went to California to play the drums in a band with his brother. Um, and so he kind of spent some time in, in a band doing the musical thing. And my mom, I think, was always just really moved by music. She was into dancing um, at a young age and kind of danced through her high school um, years. And so I think she was always moved by music. So there was always a lot of music in our house and there was always a lot of laughing and a lot of kind of togetherness. I mean, we, we're a tight knit family and I think we've become even closer over the years just because of, you know, the, the crazy things that life throws at you. Um, but we're, we're really blessed that we've had parents that were always very supportive of us and our dreams. That's beautifully yeah. said. From the beginning, I mean, yeah, they, they were, you know, willing to kind of help us pursue whatever avenue we wanted. And um, I kind of like followed in my sister's footsteps because she kind of started the singing and, and she was really comfortable being on stage. And I'm sure there were there were moments of, you know, nerves for her, but she was always just really confident in being on stage. So I always looked up to her because I was like, well, I really want to do that, but I'm just so nervous. And I remember the first, like my first debut was probably when I was how old, Lindsay, like um, seven, maybe, or six or seven. And my mom was like, okay, so you have this little role. You just have to walk across the stage and you're like in a star costume. And I was like, so nervous. I'm like, I didn't have any lines. I didn't have to sing, but (laughs) for some reason I couldn't get over that fear of, you know, being in front of an audience. Um, but luckily with my mom, sister and dad's help, you know, they, they kind of gave me that courage to, to follow in my sister's footsteps. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't say that I don't get nervous still. I mean, I think both of us, even on the show, it was like a moment of, you know, this is probably the biggest stage that we've been on yet, hopefully more to come. But I think, you know, you just, if, if it's not important to you, then, you know, I think it's a good sign if you're nervous because it's so important um, and, and you feel those nerves. So, yeah, you ha- feel in the moment, most definitely. That explains the tight knit family that you two have, because you two are the only siblings. You had similar hobbies, similar interests, especially watching your parents with music and dancing, things like that. I love doing that stuff, too. I stink at it. But <laughs> nonetheless, I still love to sing and dance. It's still a good time. You know, when I'm in the car, I think I sound amazing. <laughs> but, you know, and, and by myself, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you grew up in La Plata, Maryland. Is that correct? Yeah. La- no, I, think it's right? probably, I think it's probably supposed to be La Plata, but no one in La Plata calls it that. They call it La Plata. La Plata. Um, okay. La Plata. Yeah. So um, we did. We grew up in La Plata, Maryland. Um, we, you know, kind of a suburban community um you know we were always really involved in activities so actually before we got into music we were into horseback riding so we were actually competitive horseback riders very early on um and we were were doing shows and things and then uh we were always on the swim team every summer so swimming was a huge part of our life when we were young and then we kind of started finding our way into music and of course i think um you know, at some point my parents are like, okay, we can't be running to three different activities every night. You guys need to pick, you know, pick something and kind of stick with it. Cause obviously things get expensive too. And, um, it's not, not easy to juggle all of those things with time and money. But, um, anyway, we, we grew up in a really, I think, supportive community. And, and a lot of our start on the stage was at uh, the Port Tobacco Theater, which is actually right downtown La Plata, which has a long, long history. And it's this adorable little community theater that is just, it's where we got our start. I mean, the, some of the people there are still some of the, the most supportive. And, um, you know, we, we started off, I think my first show was A Christmas Carol. That was kind of like my first big show with adults. And then, um, and then we also did shows at a local community college um, and we were in the sound of music together, which was kind of our first big debut together on a stage. I was in fifth grade and I guess Casey was in second grade. So um, we did a lot of, lot of activities in La Plata and we've got a big community of supporters there. Is that the one that says uh, 
you are 16 going on 17. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you got it. That's okay. yeah. Um, yeah, we were part of the Von Trapp family. So I was Marta and Lindsay was Brigitte. So we had our little role there. And yeah, it was kind of funny. We have so many stories over the years of like performing on stage and, you know, having that moment together. And then if we were in like any kind of like fight or anything, we would like take it out on each other on stage. Like I'd like pinch her behind, you know, <laughs> behind. she couldn't say anything. Cause I'm like, Oh, let me just like, Interesting. Like, yeah. you know, you're the one that brought it on stage, not me. <laughs> yeah, right. you're, you're like, you're like, hey, let me help you out with this dress real quick. As you're like yeah. pinching your shoulders or something. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my, oh my goodness. Hey, like, she was, she was the here. younger, the younger devil child. Right. <laughs> Angel with devil horns. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is that's. I mean, that's something my brothers would do too. Except we would probably do like uh, the little um little knuckle punches and like the little yeah like things like that just to kind of be like oh like yeah, yeah you're, yeah. you're upsetting me right now uh you you both swam you is that both of you swam yeah we our parents got us into swimming very very young i think um you know they both swam and learned how to swim early so they wanted us to learn i will say we didn't we didn't always love swimming i mean it was a good exercise but you know we'd have to get up like saturday mornings at the crack of dawn to go to a swim meet and i don't know i think i got more nervous like before a swim meet that i ever did going on a stage for some reason i don't i, don't, I was a decent swimmer but i was always like at this fear of drowning or something I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i think part of it too is like you know you're waking up you're in you know cold pool and you're like you know <laughs> We did it we did it for years and then we did it a little bit in high school but then we just kind of realized like that wasn't our thing and <laughs> it wasn't our passion <laughs> yeah it's very physic it's physically demanding it really i did i did one year of swimming and i've always been a three season athlete but i did swim one year of swimming and i was like this is the toughest exercise i've ever done in my life like and yeah. and, and I, I was dehydrated all the time because you would think you're in water so you'd be fine and it's like no you actually have to drink a lot more water even yeah. though you're in water. Full, full body workout. Yeah. 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 So I definitely, I cramped all the time. It was a challenging workout. I mean, I learned how to swim, uh, you know, not the whole like, <laughs> like right. I learned how to actually, you know, freestyle and stuff like that. But strokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you said horseback riding. All I know about horseback riding is stirrups. That's all that is. <laughs> that's something. That is something, right? I yeah. did it, I did it very young, so I didn't even get to the point where I learned how to like I was doing shows, but I only learned how to trot, which is like um I guess what is it, equestrian? Um Yeah, it's like it's a little bit faster than a walk. You right. Know, right. But Lindsay learned and she was a little older, so she was like galloping and like competitions and you know, so well, she, sorry. <laughs> No, I wasn't. I only got to trot. I was yeah. like, really? you still, you still got some ribbons. You still won some shows. I won some blue ribbons. Yes, but <laughs> she, she wants some participation ribbons. Come on now, like, come on. <laughs> exactly. You know, we had we had a lot of fun memories doing doing horse shows. Like very young, my parents were both involved with that, and we had a little horse that we were always riding named Push Push Button. Um, and so yeah, he wasn't our horse. We not our horse. We were kind of yeah. leasing him for for a time, but we, 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 stored, him, we stored him in the garage. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> horse, but, yeah. Yeah. I mean, horseback riding is an expensive sport, though, and I just think that's if what I've heard. Yeah. If we didn't have the love of music, we we probably would have maybe gone more all in with horseback riding. But we were just our hearts kept pulling us to the stage. So at some point, we just we kind of had to make a, a tough decision to kind of leave it behind and, and fully pursue music. So yeah. An executive decision at the end of the day, but it seems like it's working out for you. I mean, you two have made a career out of it. So I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you two are doing great. Uh, you chose the right path, but uh, you want to know, I don't know if you know this, did you know, in my research, I found that the founders of good Charlotte, the band is from that town. Did you know that? We do. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. They went to our high school, I think. Yeah, really? our high school. Remember, Mrs. Murky taught, I think, one of them, or yeah, two of them, maybe. Okay. Sure. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 Our chorus teacher, we were really close with, and 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 still, I'm friends with her daughter, and um, yeah, we we always were very involved with 
musical theater and chorus in high school. And we remember her telling us that they, I think they were maybe a couple years older. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, that, yeah. But I saw that. I was like, wow, look at that. Good Charlotte, the Maryland's. It, <laughs> it, there you go. Big That's stars awesome. coming out of La Plata. <laughs> That's right. That's right. A small, a small suburban. Other than the small suburban, uh, you know, type of what else is out there? Is there anything like fun? Is there anything that like I need to go ahead and try to make a trip to to go ahead and check out there? Farmland. Okay. <laughs> a lot of farmland. I would say like for us, Especially the water. Yeah, I mean the water. Oh, is, is it near the ocean? Uh, the Potomac River is okay. kind of close to where we grew up. Um, don't don't quote me on the other bodies of water, but there are other <laughs> there are other rivers and lakes and things. But yeah, the Potomac <laughs> River is right near the the city and actually right near where we were living um at a point and so if you like water sports like it's it's an awesome place to you know go boating go jet skiing you know water skiing so um and then of course you know port tobacco theater you got to go catch a show at the community theater that's i definitely yeah uh no i won't embarrass us about our geography i i already embarrassed myself enough trying with my spelling and pronunciation with your last name so I'm all set with uh, my geography <laughs> skills, but uh, speaking, uh, so <laughs> moving on. So Lindsay, you were Miss Marilyn in 2010, Casey 2013. Talk about the pageant life. What was that like for you two? Yeah. So we, we got into pageants. Um, we, we started finding out about the opportunities like high school years, both of us. Um, Casey got involved more as a teen. Um, I got involved um, as I was kind of moving into college and I stumbled upon a local Miss America pageant and realized that it was a scholarship pageant. So you actually win scholarship money from it and that it included, you know, a talent portion, um, an interview portion, and it's focused a lot about um, community service. And so, I mean, we both, um, you know, have had to to pay for our college education. um, And so, you know, any little bit of scholarship money was helpful at the time. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to give this a whirl and see how I'm, how I do at it. I've obviously been on stage, you know, for, for many, many years. So that's a comfortable place for me. And long story short, I mean, I ended up going my very first local pageant. I was second runner up. And then I went to another local pageant and ended up winning that one, which then qualified me to compete at Miss Maryland. Um, So you do in Miss America have to win a local before you go to the state competition. And so it took me four tries to win Miss Maryland. Uh, I was second runner up three times and then I won the fourth time. So I would say if that doesn't show you how, how, uh, you know, determined that I am and how perseverant I am, uh, then I don't know what does, because there's a lot that goes into it. Um, that a lot of people don't know about, but it's, it's hours and hours of community service, um, hours and hours of volunteering, speaking at events, performing at events, you know, working on your kind of your brand. Um, It's, it's kind of almost like a branding project, which I feel like kind of helped me and Casey in in terms of forming the Maryland's brand later on. Um, But we learned so much. I mean, even from an interview perspective, I mean, you spend hours like mock interviewing where people are asking you about all kinds of questions related to the economy and your opinion on abortion and, you know, wow. education. And so it's, it's, it's not a fluffy interview. It's an interview where you have to be educated and you have to be well-versed. So um, all of those years of preparation, I think really made us, that much more articulate and ready kind of for all the other opportunities that were ahead, not only kind of day job wise, but obviously in our, in our music life too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, echoing just what Lindsay said, um, you know, it was just an opportunity for both of us to, to really pursue our music as well and um, have opportunity to perform at all different types of events. I remember I got to perform at an Orioles Yankees game. At oh, that's the- so cool. And, I, I mean, it was just, in what world do you get to have that opportunity? And and so that was really cool. But then some of my most favorite appearances were the volunteer opportunities with Best Buddies, the Special Olympics, um, just seeing the joy on, on kids' faces just because I was Miss Maryland and um, I was there. I'm like, oh my gosh, like you guys are the sweetest. And I remember I went back a couple 
years after that and all of them like most of the kids that had been in the program for a while they remembered me and I felt like so honored that they remembered me and they were so excited to see me so those are the moments that you just you realize why you do it and and the purpose and the passion behind it is you know because of the the smiles that you get to bring to other people's faces so that's great. beautiful that's beautiful and I, ch I cherish that you I cherish that because my background prior to doing this is actually in special education. That's what I worked. At. So I worked with kids in those type of uh, classrooms in the school uh, before I transitioned into media and things of that nature. So when I hear those type of stories and hear it, it, it warms my heart because I definitely know what it's like to be in those rooms, you know, six, seven hours with those kids. And they do remember these things. They do recognize those things. And a lot of the times they don't get the credit. And the Special Olympics is something that I've always, it's always been dear to me. I actually was going to participate in the one in Florida this past year as a, as a volunteer. How, um, however, unfortunately, it wasn't in the cars. I got COVID, so I wasn't able to make it. But, um, but that's something that's always been near and dear to my heart. So to hear you talk about it, uh, I love it, Casey. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate you doing that because you're right. It is a significant impact for those kids it means a lot to those kids so yeah. um it sounds like the pageant life has given you both experiences of being in front of big audiences uh as well as connecting with individuals at the same time which is kind of translated to your success now as the maryland's is that correct yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. i think for us you know like just it's been not something that just happened overnight where, you know, all of a sudden we're like, oh, we're going to, you know, be a duo and try to sing. I mean, like you, you've heard us talk about, we, this has been in the works for years. I mean, since we were little girls, we've been performing. And so it was just kind of a natural progression that we came together because we actually started singing the national anthem together at swim meets. And so that was kind of how we, we kind of discovered, oh my gosh, well, we could do this harmony here and you know we really have a nice blend because you know we're sisters already and so that was really our first debut i feel like as the maryland's was was at swim meets and singing the national anthem that was our song um so from there we we kind of just really started developing you know the harmonies and and actually in the beginning i couldn't even hear harmonies my sister would have to kind of say to me okay well this is what you need to sing here and it's just incredible now because it's second nature to me now i can't hear a song without hearing the harmony so it's, it's amazing to see that the the growth that we've had over the years um but my sister and i did move to nashville together about seven years ago and we really wanted to put all of our efforts into trying to really make this a success for ourselves and and as the maryland's and we've performed all over you know the state of tennessee um especially right in Nashville. We've performed at, you know, little store performances um, everywhere from big breweries. Um, and so it's just been an amazing experience. We've, we've grown so much over the years, just really perfecting our, our talent um, and just making it, you know, part of our lives. But again, Lindsay said we have day jobs too. So we try to juggle both, but we're persistent girls and we don't give up. So we just, we make it all work. What do you two do during the day? Your day-to-day -day operations. I'm in marketing um, for a hair company. Okay. And then I'm also in marketing. So we both are in marketing and communications. I work for a recruitment marketing agency. So um, it, it's kind of funny. We took similar paths even in college. Um, you know, I think I really wanted to go to school for, for music. And I think you know, having lots of, you know, full philosophical talks with my parents about like where that would lead. I think they kind of pushed me to, to get my career in something else and continue to pursue, pursue music on the side. And honestly, you know, I'm, I'm so glad I did. And, and Casey and I both have really been able to support ourselves and to be able to, you know, earn a living and then put some of the money that we're making back into our music. I mean, we're, we're, very self-funded you know we 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 try every chance we can get to do recordings and and to make videos and things but you know even when you're doing small scale things there's there's you know money involved and so we're grateful that we've both had a career to be able to to support us in that way um 
but it, it definitely hasn't been easy. I mean, to, to juggle something full time and then to also be able to find time to practice and create social content and, you know, line up shows and rehearse with your band and, you know, work on your branding. Like it's, it's been really, it's, it's been challenging, but you know, it's, it's our passion and we wouldn't have it any other way. I think we're hoping that maybe whatever happens from this, the, the voice, um, we can, you know, continue to pursue music in a more full-time capacity. Um, so that's cool. Awesome. We want to be able to, uh, hopefully our companies aren't watching, but we want to be able to quit our, our day jobs um, and be able to make this a full-time career. So absolutely. You want to make your passion, your vocation. And I, I completely respect that. It does show your determination and your hard work because I'll tell you one thing right now, it's hard to do one, it, it, you know, it's hard to do your nine to five and then like do a 30 minute workout. So I can imagine how you two are doing your nine to fives, but then you're doing essentially a whole nother job, a whole nother career, you know, in the after hours too. So I completely respect that. And I, again, I think Lindsay alluded to it earlier in the episode. I think it just shows your determination. I think it shows the dedication that you two have. Um, you mentioned college. Did you two happen to go to the same college as well? <laughs> different. We went to different branches of the University of Maryland. So <laughs> I went to College Park in case he went to Baltimore County. Mm-hmm. UMBC, the golden retriever. Oh, wait, they were. Oh, wow. So you you're that uh, you're the school where a few years back in March Madness, they were the 16th seed that beat the number one seed. Yeah. It's the yeah. Thing that's ever been done. And I really go for all the sports, but then, yeah, I like all of a sudden saw them like on headlines and I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they, it was the only time it's ever been done in the history of March Madness where the 16th oh, wow. seat upset the number one seat. So that's your school. So if anything, that is good. <laughs> that is a good story for you two. Cause underdogs, you're going to overcome anything that's that comes right. your way. I like so I love it. I love it. So. Well, you have some good talking points here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no. So you said the Maryland's uh, started roughly around 10 years ago, right? So it was a slow progression, the dynamic of of this dynamic duo. It didn't just happen overnight. Uh, clearly, it was a three and a half year difference. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, <laughs> this, this duo didn't happen overnight. How did we come up with the name? Well, we went through a lot of different iterations first. And I mean, we, we started with the sisters, which were like, uh, maybe we need something a little more, a little more exciting. Um, we, I don't know. We, we just, we, we played around with so many different names and we really wanted something that stayed true to who we were. And, you know, the more we were talking about it, it's like our roots are in Maryland. I mean, we were both Miss Maryland. And so we liked the idea of Maryland, but we wanted a clever name clever way to spell it. And so we kind of took the female name Marilyn and added a D. Um, and honestly, it's it's stuck ever since. The funny thing about it, too, is Casey's middle name is Marie, which kind of lends itself to the, the Mer- Mary, Mary part. And then my obviously first name is Lindsay. So Lynn's. So oh, Mary. Yeah. So it is a weird first name or first middle name tie as well. So <laughs> definitely a good blend of the two and, and your roots of being in Maryland. No, I think that that's a uh, beautifully said. And I think that's really cool. Uh, yeah. You probably didn't want to go with the sisters. Uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that I'm glad that that was, was retooled. Doesn't have the same ring. No, no. And, 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 and maybe you thought of sister, sister, but copyright, you know what I mean? Disney channel. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to go that route. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Hey, that was a good show. I watched that growing up. Um, but anyways, um, I love the song Riot, which is on your website, the acoustic version of it. I encourage anyone to listen to it. Very beautiful. Do you write your own songs? Yeah, so we have been, um, you know, dabbling in writing. Um, Lindsay actually wrote the song that is on our site called Saving Grace, which is about Uh, our mom. And it just, it, I'll let Lindsay speak to it. I kind of, I can't take credit for it. I was away on a trip and she, I came back and she's like, I have this song, you need to hear it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And it's beautiful. And so then I added in some of the harmonies on the track. Um, but yes, we do write, we are getting more into that and we're, we're collaborating with some writers and 
actually the voice brought us an opportunity to meet all different types of um, vocalists and, and songwriters. So we're hoping to collaborate with them to kind of put out some, some new music and, and give the world something new to hear. Yeah. And I'll just like add, so I play the piano, Casey plays a little piano and then she picked up guitar um, a few, few years back when we moved to Nashville. And so we've been actually, you know, very musically inclined our whole lives. And for some reason we moved to Nashville, everyone's like, you need to write, you need to write. And I, I thought, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't, I just don't know if I have it. I don't know if I have it. And what I think we've realized is that yes, it is a special craft, but we kind of already have all the little tools. It's just a matter of pulling them all together. So, you know, melodically, it's like I come up with some melodies and, and musical ideas. And then I'm actually like during the day, my day job, I do a lot of writing. So writing comes very naturally to me too. And so it just took a while to kind of realize how to put them together and fuse them together. But I will say like, honestly, songwriters don't get enough credit. I think so many artists have made it big because of the songs that they're singing. And I agree. Um, that's why, you know, every time we're performing on the voice, um, you know, we try our best to tag the writers of the songs because the, I mean, the, the songs are the heart and the soul of the music that we that we sing. And mm -hmm. so we have so much respect for songwriters and we're excited, like Casey said, to be able to work and collaborate with more of them. I think this this opportunity has already brought some some writing opportunities to us. So but props to all the songwriters out there, because it's it's definitely a, a different kind of talent and a craft all in, all in of itself. And I mean, there's a lot of people that can sing, but when you get the, the right singer with the right song, that's when the magic really happens. I totally agree with you. And I, I'm big on the songwriting aspect of it. I'm literally the type of person that I'll listen to a song. I'll be reading the lyrics and then I'll Google search. Why, what does this song mean? What is this person? Why did they write this song? And you have to do a, you, you have to do an extensive search, but then you find it. And I'm like, wow, there, there's a lot of like, like you said, like, the meat and potatoes are in that. Like, it's very like, that's where like the heart and soul I think comes from. And like the, the mute, obviously the singers, they deserve credit too, but you're totally right. And I couldn't agree with you more about how the words are equally as important. And sometimes it doesn't get the credit as, as, as it should. Um, but I'm big on the words. I think, it, I think they're very beautiful. I love listening to words of songs. Cause I'm like, wow, that, that, that line stuck with me or, or that song sticks with me because I can feel that, that, you know, and I think when in how you were saying how an artist sometimes when an artist sings it, in my opinion, I feel like when they've experienced that they can sing it and it's, you can feel that in my opinion, I feel like if, if they're experiencing whatever it is, whether it's heartache, whether it's even happy times, whatever the case may be, you can feel that when they're performing in that song. So I think the words are equally as important. I couldn't agree with you more. I don't think it gets enough credit. So I think that's really cool that while she was on a trip, you were able to write a song about your mom and your mom means a lot to you. And I think that that's beautifully said in saving grace, right? That's what you said. Yes. Yep. Saving grace. Yeah. I believe any, I, I believe I saw it on your website as well. And it's on your YouTube page. So anyone check it out. And I think it's on your music page on like Apple music and stuff like that. So, yes. uh, Please check it out if you have the opportunity um, because it's a beautiful song. Other than singing, which obviously this is mostly what we're going to be talking about. What is your hobby that you most like to enjoy doing? Hmm. Casey, I'll let you go first. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually a big, I love, love to cook. Um, oh, right. So, and actually I've, I've over the years just kind of started off like helping my mom in the kitchen and, you know, she, we have, family recipes from years of, you know, generations, but, um, kind of started learning that way. And then I, I just kind of have picked it up. Obviously I think it's, it's a fun thing to do. And, you know, I feel like I do it with, you know, friends, family, um, it brings everybody together. So I enjoy doing that. And then I also have a little Maltese puppy that I love to spend time with. Um, I got her last year, um, she's actually over here just sleeping. I was going to see if she could make her debut, but she's sound asleep. <laughs> um, and then I'm also now, um, so I love spending time with my fiance. Um, he's in the air force. So, um, really supportive of his career as well. And he's supportive of my singing career. So, um, it, it's just a perfect, you know, combination of, of all things. 
congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I mean, I don't want to take all the same things. I will say I, I enjoy cooking and, and baking actually is, I feel like my forte. I can whip up a good yeah. cake muffin, which it's um, not always, it's well, not always a good thing. I'm trying to get into more like gluten-free, dairy-free stuff. So I'm not baking up um, all the bad things. But um, honestly, I love being outside, being outdoors. I got into paddleboarding last summer um, with my boyfriend. And we kind of explore the lakes in, in Tennessee a lot, go take out the paddle boards. Um, and then, I mean, traveling is really kind of what I love most, exploring new cities um, whenever I can, you know, trying new restaurants. Um, so, I mean, and then of course I, I would also say shopping. <laughs> shopping. Yeah. shopping well, I left um, that one out. I didn't want to give that I mean, away, but I don't want to sound superficial. But what girl doesn't love, you know, beauty and and clothing and things? Even when I don't buy anything, I just like to to browse. Honestly, yeah, window shop, some yeah. sort of like some sort yeah. of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> browse. I browse at Target and then it, and then you end up your, your whole yeah. basket full. Yeah. Or like Casey and I will browse online and like fill up our carts and then never buy anything. It's just yeah. like yeah, I will say too, um, I like at one point was doing like freelance makeup artistry on the side and it's like both of us are really into makeup and beauty and, and it's really fun to just like see all the new products that come out, try them out and um so yeah, we we have fun being girls too. We're yeah. we're girly girls at heart. <laughs> yeah, no, be beautifully said, and and couldn't agree with you more. It sounds like you have great hobbies: being outdoor, cooking, baking is dangerous. I'm a sucker for chocolate chip cookies. Oh, I, 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 I make a mean chocolate chip cookie. So I am. Might have to tell you some. <laughs> you you might have. Is it soft bake? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. All right, all right. You, you, you've sold me. You've sold me. I, you, like, I, you like cookies when they're cold. I like when they're like in the freezer. It's so weird. Really? No, I have. <laughs> I'm gonna need to try that now. I'm gonna need to no. Uh, I'm gonna need to try that now. Uh, I'm actually gonna write that down. Cookies cold. In the I, know, I don't think you can go wrong with the chocolate chip cookie anyway, but I think that's my favorite way. Oh, that's <laughs> my vice. That's my vice. I, I, I like. Oh my goodness! You put a good chocolate chip cookie in front of me. God bless. <laughs> but, <laughs> so uh, we'll talk about the voice now. The two of you had your blind audition. You saying, what if I never get over you by Lady A? Beautifully done, by the way. Why did you decide to sing that song? We fell in love with that song as soon as it came out. Um, and it's one of those songs that it just it pulls at your heartstring without being too slow. So it's kind of got this driving tempo yes, yeah. um, while also being very emotional. So I think that kind of combined two elements that we wanted for a blind audition song. And then of course the harmonies in it are just so powerful and so interwoven. I mean, they're kind of actually complex harmonies and you know, we, we knew we only had a very short time to make an impression. And so we wanted to be able to show kind of the emotion, the harmonies um, and and really just kind of that driving energy that we feel like we create together on stage. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a no brainer. We, we are very drawn to Lady A's music in general. And then when that song came out, um, we, we were singing it all over Nashville and, um, we had the chance, I think, I guess the voice, we, we got um, some selections and we, we ranked them and that was our number one pick. And then they gave us that one. And we were like, oh my God, we actually cried. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, were, we cried. Well, I mean, speaking of crying, Lindsay, you were crying on stage. Like you were in the moment and not to call you out. I mean. I <laughs> cry all the time. I mean, the I sad part about it, the, the, the bad part about it is, is like, I'm always the one behind stage, like trying to say you know to, to my sister like all right we got to keep it together we got to go up there and we need oh. to make our talking points and then it's like always right right in the moment when i'm like want to say i should be saying all my talking points i like i freeze and i start getting emotional and then she has to take over well you know it's funny because i do feel like we have a, at least a good balance of it we both don't break down at the same time usually like i remember um there was one performance that i then started breaking down and you were like, well, I don't know why you're crying so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you cried the last time, so. 
<laughs> we have to balance it out. <laughs> Casey, Casey, you, you have, I, I, Lindsay, I hate to say this, but she has the upper edge now. You cried on, she's going to say, she's going to be able to say, hey, you cried on national television. Which, right. Oh, uh, God, isn't, I know. Isn't really a bad thing because you, you know how you were saying earlier in the episode, like if you're nervous for something. So, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you broke down on national television. I, I mean, you, oh, you did. Thanks for, oh, thanks for rubbing it in. Casey, 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 you were a good sister. You you consoled her when she needed it. So. No, but I think, you know, hopefully it just shows people that, like, we are really authentic people and like, you know, that, that's not fake tears by any means. Like we are, we are very grateful and, you know, to have that opportunity to have had that opportunity. And, um, I just think that, you know, a lot of people tend to look at us and just say, Oh, well, you know, they're, you know, they've been handed everything and, Oh, they're probably not that grateful. They, you know, are used to getting everything they want. And that's the opposite of the truth and not to get on a serious note, but no, I just no, feel like people no. don't, you know, a lot of people need to see, you know, our hearts and, and really um, the people we are. We always want to give to other people. And, and that's why we sing, because we just want to share our voices and inspire people. So to have that opportunity, it was a very surreal moment being on stage and having John pick us because, um, you know, I mean, I don't even have to explain why. It, it's an incredible opportunity. It's just amazing. Before, before he turned around and you picked him, there were a lot of shenanigans though. I mean, Blake yeah. was kind of teasing yeah. him. Camila uh, put a spotlight on her. John had to bribe you with an extra jacket. So uh, th did that really, that went on for a while, huh? It seemed yeah, like it went on for a while. They, I think they cut it down even more because we were up there for quite a while and we were just kind of taking it all in, just like, oh my God, are they actually fighting over us like this is the most amazing and that's when i was like can we just cook you both because we're a duo maybe we can have right? you don't want to split it up you don't want to split it up yeah yeah it, it's funny because what you see on tv is actually you know a very edited version of what actually happened so we were up there a lot longer than what they even showed and and honestly camila made such a compelling argument i mean she had such really um very thoughtful things to say. I mean, especially about her experience with harmonies and, you know, in, in a girl group. And so, yeah. I mean, even though I think our heart and our gut was telling us John in the moment, I mean, she was making a very compelling argument and, you know, it's, it's hard. It's honestly harder than I thought to pick, to pick someone. Cause you feel like there's things that you could get from both of them, you know? And, but in the end, we just had to kind of go with our hearts. And we just felt like from the beginning, John, I think because of his musicality and, and his long history with music and the fact that he's collaborated with so many different types of artists and he seems to really um, have an ear for, you know, all different kinds of voices. I think we felt like we could learn the most from him and that he could really appreciate our sound as well. Uh, so we we were so happy we went with him. And honestly, it was I just feel like he's been such a great coach for us. So, well, you wouldn't have gone wrong either way because they're they're both icons in the industry. But your dream was to duet with him while he plays the piano. So uh, I, I hope you get to live out that dream. So then the battle rounds, which aired this past uh, Monday or Tuesday, and you sang How Deep Is Your Love by the Bee Gees, another song with multiple people, amazingly done. John chose your opponent, and he used his only save on you. It's not a spoiler, because it happened. Uh, <laughs> but what was that moment like for you, too? Oh, my gosh. I was just kind of preparing, like, you know, my my gratefulness to him. And before I even knew it, he like pushed his button and I'm like, Oh my God, I started getting all like sweaty and red. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, mean, I, I was just preparing that that was kind of the end for us, but you know, I kind of totally forgot that all the judges have a save, you know, you're kind of up there on stage, just pouring your heart out and you forget kind of the rules of the show, but we yeah. were really lucky to have the save and, just very honored that John believed in us and, um, you know, saw our potential. And I think it was really cool. The song that we, we were given and John picked it was the Bee Gees and they were a brother group. And so yeah. we really fell in love with the song and we'll probably be singing that more at, at our gigs, um, in the future. But, um, 
yeah and then john i'm sure you saw he like came backstage and like surprised us and i'm like oh my god like is this happening and then after that like again the waterworks but that's when i really started like breaking down and i'm like this is incredible so uh, a moment that will always be stamped in my memory um for sure yeah yeah and lindsay for you how did that feel well it was it was amazing i mean I, I have to be honest with you, though. I felt in my heart, I was like, he's not going to let us go. He's not going to let us go. I just had this feeling because I felt like he connected with us in the time that we had with him in rehearsal. And I think he could see not only our talent, but I think he could really see our hearts. So I would just, I, I mean, you never know what's going to happen, but I had this glimmer of hope that that's what was, that's what was hopefully going to happen. And so when it did happen, I mean, I was just overjoyed and, I don't know. I feel silly, but I made that little comment after backstage. I'm like, oh, I just want to squeeze him. <laughs> he probably thinks I'm this little creep. A little weirdo. It's a memoir. <laughs> I honestly don't even re remember saying that, but that's just so how you kind of are almost like in another world in those moments. Like you don't. It's an outer being experience. Being experience. It's like an outer being experience. Yeah. I mean, John Legend hugging you. It's like, uh, -uh. I know. Our right now this is amazing so, yeah you end up saying and doing things you probably are like yeah like can we can we burn the tape on that I, I, any way we can but oh. I, know. I, I have to say too you know they spend hours with us behind scenes like interviewing and getting content and we have so many funny things that we did on camera and we're hoping that they show some of them in like the upcoming episodes um, it, was, it wasn't like things it was just like interviews and like like sound bites of just like because like Lindsay said it's hours of like interviews you end up really just like leaning into your your personalities and just being yourself and letting the nerves kind of go away and if you spend a day with Lindsay and I like I feel like it's <laughs> pretty hard because we just we have this banter sometimes that is just is it's a natural sister um you know banter and and humor so I think we got to show that on the show um, I, I'm experiencing it right now. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I, 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 and it's not even a day. It's less than an hour. So I completely get it right now. Yeah. I know. Uh, we have, we have, we have of, Sorry. What? I was just going to say, should we tell them about any of our little arguments we had? <laughs> we can go. How about this? We don't maybe need to get into the specifics, but I will say we had, <laughs> um, they put us in rooms that had like an adjoining door. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're out there, you're out there actually for quite a bit of time. And of course, with COVID and lockdown, we ended up spending a lot of time in our hotel rooms. But we um, most of the time we would like keep the door open and have this like free flowing, like, you know, walkability through the rooms. And then, you know, there'd be times where and I'm sure some of our, our little roommates across the hall heard where we would get into an argument and we'll like <laughs> slam the little conjoining doors and then. <laughs> I'm, I'm, going my, little corners. I'm yeah. going to my adjacent room right now. All right. Yeah. I'm going to my room. And it's like, you know, slam yeah. the two doors in, in order to keep them closed. But anyway, it's, we, we had yeah. a lot of funny little moments. Do you have another example? I mean, I, I think the one that sticks out in my mind is when we were talking about wardrobe, like we <laughs> get like a stylist there and it's a really awesome opportunity. And they kind of ask you like, what is your style? Like, let's kind of get like a mood board together. And um, I, I, we both kind of submitted something and I do tend to wear, like, I like more like tops with like pants, but then I felt like every episode they were putting me in pants and I'm like, well, I don't always want to be in pants because I'm I'm actually like a girly girl too. And so like Lindsay always ended up in the dresses. And so we kind of got into a little quarrel there. And I'm like, well, I want to wear a dress this time. And she's like, well, you said you like pants. So. <laughs> as, and then as, long as, as long as you didn't pinch her over it. All right, Casey? No, as long as it, yeah. no pinching, no physical harm was done. But, you know. Because at one point she did say on camera, she goes, well, I'm the one that always wears the pants in the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it was funny. Oh my God. anyway, it was happy at times on on interviews, but we really like we loved the producers of the show. Like everybody we worked with on the show was just incredible, and like they really just want to get to know you for you. And yeah. I think, unlike you know other reality shows, I think they're trying to 
bring out like drama or focus on negative. And this was not the case at all with the show. And we just felt really grateful that they wanted to get to know us for our true personalities and, and our story. So. It yeah, great. it definitely seems that way. It seems like they do a good job at marketing you as an individual. And I think they kind of touched on that in the promo uh, you you talked about how you struggled. You both at one point struggled with an eating disorder too, and I personally have as well. And I just I, I appreciate the strength that both of you have to even share something like that because going back to what we talked about in the episode, it shows the authenticity, how real it is, and there's how it's genuine with you. And you're not just two pretty faces on TV that they're trying to exploit for funny or to make fun of purposes. It's more so to show you that these people are real people too. And so I, I, I think it's admirable that you talked about that because I think there's a lot of people who do struggle with something like that. And when they hear someone who's on TV making a difference, weaving their way into a new world, they're able to kind of feel like, wow, well, they were real people a few weeks ago and you still are real people. But, you know, a lot of times you think to yourself, oh, well, they're on TV. But yes, but they're still real people, too. So I think it shows the strength of both of you to, t to touch on that, of how real it is, too. It, do it does show how genuine you two are and how authentic you two are. So I want to say it's admirable on both of your parts. Well, thank you for saying that. And, and um, hopefully you've been able to get through your your. Absolutely. I, I love my cookies. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's I mean, it's something we both did deal with. And yeah. We're, we're proud to say we were able to, with the support of our family, kind of move through those times. But we've also experienced other challenges, too. Um, I mean, you know, we both have had bouts with bullying and bullying in the workplace. There's, There's been a lot of different things that we've had to deal with that I think, you know, we don't always get a chance to talk about. But we hope that by sharing a little bit of our story that we can hopefully inspire other people, you know, young girls, young boys to know that they're not alone, that, you know, life can be challenging, but you have to surround yourself with people that are supportive and that love you. And that if you kind of stay focused on who you are and, um, you know, the dreams that you have, you can get through tough times and get to brighter futures. And, you know, this journey that we've been on has not been an easy one, but, it's made us stronger. It's made us more resilient. It's made us more sure of who we are. I mean, I think even moving to Nashville seven years ago when we were meeting with different people within the music industry, you know, we were a little bit more naive in terms of understanding, you know, people's true intentions and, and knowing how to kind of trust, you know, the words of others and the advice of others. And, and over time, we've we've really gotten stronger in, in knowing like this is who we are. This is our brand. This is what we will not compromise in order to make our dreams happen. And we've been able to be very vocal about that now, whereas I think years ago we we may have not been. And so I don't think enough people speak up about those types of things. And you know what? One thing we always said is if we get on the voice, we want to use it to share our singing voices, but we also want to use it to share our voice and our story so that hopefully we can inspire other people. Perfectly said, Linz. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and you're using that platform to do that. So, wow. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm moved. No, that, that was awesome. Yeah. Lindsay yeah. for president. Yeah. Just <laughs> She she went she went in her uh, in her bag of uh, pageantry there. That's the, it. That was good. It was very yeah. powerful, and it is so true because, like like you said, you know, some people go on the show to just share their voice, and that's great. But like, it's it's also an opportunity to help people that are struggling with something that you've struggled with. And if you're yeah. hiding it, I mean, yeah, it was hard to say that on national TV and worrying about the judgment that might come with that. But at the same time, we've we've gotten through it. So it's our duty now to to share our struggles so that we can help people that are in the midst of that. So um, hopefully that touched somebody. And, and if anybody ever feels like they need to reach out to us to get advice or how to get through anything, like we're always here. That's what we want to do um, and, and help, you know, young girls and boys that are going through it. I love it. Yeah. And like I said, I'm a grown man and I, I was still moved by yeah, it. I was inspired by it. So it, anybody from walks of life. So exactly. It's, you, it's not about age it. either. Yeah, that's very true. It's, it's any age, any gender. Um, it, it doesn't yeah. discriminate. So 
I love it. No, beautifully said, Casey and Lindsay. Uh, so the 1230 Club, is that going to is that going to be a tour or a live uh, live shows that you two are going to be doing soon? Yeah, so we've been playing at the 1230 Club for the past couple of years, I guess now. Um, and we're, we're working on kind of lining up a number of shows. So we don't have anything uh, on the calendar just yet. We're trying to get get a, a band together um, and, and kind of get a new set list together. Now that we've been on The Voice, we want to incorporate a lot of new songs and things. So, But folks can go to our website, themarylands.com, which is where we post all of our shows um, and ba- bands in town as well. Other than your website, where can people find you so they can listen to all your great content, get in touch with you, that type of stuff? Yeah, we're on all social media platforms. Um, we, we just got on TikTok recently. So oh, yeah. talk to Casey. She's going to be our little TikTok creator. But um, <laughs> I can't wait to see it, Casey. I'm trying. I'm really trying here. I'm like trying to be hip and fun. And we have like, a little... Casey, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to try to do the renegade. All right? You and, um, like, I'll, I'll try yeah. to hit the renegade. I, I don't know how to do it either. So. All right. We'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we're also we're also on Spotify, iTunes, like music wise. So um, and we've got a lot of music coming. So that's very exciting. But stay tuned. Um, we'll, we'll have more things coming later this fall. I love it. I love it. Well, the Maryland, thank you so much for doing this, Lindsay and Casey. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day, chatting with a guy like me, having fun. I had a great time. Hopefully we can do something like this again because this was great. This was great. So I'd lo- I'd love to have you on in the future. Um, so thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you thank both. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, we hope you'll invite us back and um, maybe the next time we can sing for you. <laughs> oh, I would love that. And 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 you know what? You know what? Even, even though I'm not a good yeah, I, I I need some of that cookies and I do want to try that frozen thing. So w- yeah. when you when when I get that batch of cookies, I'll have. Just the way I eat them, and then I'll freeze a couple. I have my guitar right here. I'll try to play next time, too, all right? That, nice. that was my goal, all right? So I'm, excited. I, I'm excited for it. So thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate you, too. Do not forget to follow my Instagram, at I'm Nathaniel Reyes. Click the subscribe button so you can listen to the show on Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube. Hear great stories like these two. We did a great job. This was the first episode with two people. I think we did a great job at not talking over as sisters. I felt like you did great. Uh, the yeah. sisters, now the Maryland's. I love it. Uh, this was a great show. So I thank you. So thank you both so much. Thank you for having us, Nathaniel. We we love being on the on the podcast, and we hope to we hope there's more to come. Absolutely, always will. So and as always on the Razor Reflection Podcast, may you live, may you love, may you thrive. I'm the male Oprah. I love you all. <laughs>